Okay, so I am 39 weeks right now. I'm gonna try to talk really fast because I think I'm in labor. Like, wait, what? He's here. MJ is here. Look at this video we're supposed to talk about that experience. Honestly, we had a totally different plan for what this was gonna be, how we were gonna tell this birth story because with Micah, we had such an incredible documentation of that birth. And that was the plan this time, but you know, God's plan and our plan didn't really line up, but it happened the way God intended. So we'll throw out our plan for his any day, anytime. And I'll add this, like, it's dope that not even realizing that we moved around different spaces in our living room to like figure out the best way um, to like share this from like a lighting standpoint and not wanting to have too much extra equipment. And then sure enough, we are literally like, they have the view as if they were here when MJ was born. Uh -huh. Yeah, oh Which yeah. Is very random. That is, we did not plan that. But this yeah, is literally yeah. the location of where he was born, right here in our living room right in, in this room. spot. Exactly where I am. Five exactly. Going, like <laughs> yes. The whole night. Our plan initially was to have a home water birth yeah. with our midwife Tari. And if you all have been tapped in on my YouTube channel, you would know that I actually have a whole pregnancy series called My Pregnancy Diary, where I've been documenting my entire pregnancy with him and Essentially, I, for the last three, four months, have been putting out weekly episodes. And so I was sharing a lot of kind of how we came to uh, the idea of how we were going to do this birth and everything and showing you what our process was like this time with Tari and doing all of our prenatal experience and birth here at home and so this video is actually going to be the last video of that series as well oh, as right? yeah because I finally make the look y'all I ain't been on that you have, to, you have where uh at least in the beginning when we went to Gentle Beginnings, you're in it. Okay, that okay, that one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but I've been watching you, some of the a, recent it's a, ones. It's like a I've diary. You ain't putting notes in my diary. It's from my POV. Even that. Purpose. You've been so um like ninja esque with these videos too. I'm like, where does she? I'm watching some of them. I'm like, where is she? Like, where does she find the time to like slip off and 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 do this and well like, that's the point you know a diary is something that you put you like you write in your diary in privacy true and true. in your own kind of like you know moment so that's how i treated the series was like i would sneak off into the bathroom i would go the be patio. in huh the patio the patio like in the backyard like i would kind of do it in these moments where I could just talk and kind of get out whatever was, you know, on my heart at the time. And that's how, you know, I think most of us, if you ever wrote in a diary, you journaled, like that's how you approached it. So that is very much so how the series is recorded um, and created. And so, yeah, this is going to be the last official video of the series because initially the plan was that our birth video would be the last kind of climactic ending to the pregnancy series, but this is now the climactic climactic ending of the pregnancy series because this is us telling and sharing that story in this way versus in the way we originally planned, which was working with our photographer and videographer, Carmen Bridgewater again, who produced and created the video of Micah's birth that was so beautiful and has almost 3 million views on YouTube which is just insane. It's actually now my most viewed video on my channel of being a creator for over 10 years and I have like over 500 videos on my channel and that video is now my most viewed video in history. So kudos to God for creating that opportunity <laughs> because that's crazy. But incredible so yeah we're talking about our plans too so our plan so <laughs> our plan was to yeah have a home water birth and we had that plan it just didn't necessarily go 
according to the details of our version of the plan because it went a lot differently than what we anticipated. There was nothing, I don't want to say there was nothing like special about the day, but it was a, it was a regular day. It, it was, was a regular day. And it's kind of crazy because, you know, thinking about the moments that we consider like big moments, not even just us, but like, you know, we always try to, when I try to, but it always comes up. Bible always comes up, right? So you think about like the day that Moses sees God in the burning bush. It was a regular day. It wasn't like a... It's true. Oh, today something right. great is going to happen. Something historic is going to happen. Yeah, let me make sure yeah. that I spend 10 extra minutes in the shower and then I maybe brush my teeth for an extra yeah. two minutes. No. And, like, spending some more time with God today. Like, it was a very, like regular day and yeah. and honestly for my POV like there's been moments throughout this entire pregnancy that I had to remind myself to remind myself that you were pregnant mm -hmm. and I say that from a standpoint of like me being cognizant of you being cognizant of you I keep I keep doing that but that's how I felt because while, yes, I know that you're pregnant and all of that, because this one has been so different, yeah, it's almost been like, even even the post, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later, but like even the post, it's continued to feel like, okay, like this is happening. She's actually pregnant. Like she had this baby. So even though she's in a better, you know, position, she's, feeling better, she has more energy than she's had. Yes, she had a few labor, I don't know if you call them labor scares, whatever you want to call them, but like. some Yeah, some preterm false labor yeah. moments. But like, we had so many of those in the past that it was like, well, she had these for three weeks last time before anything right. happened. Yeah. So still, it's just a regular, right. regular day. Yeah. And that's how it felt that day. It was, I had, you know, been having Braxton Hicks contractions every day okay. for the last couple days. I got him. And that day, they started as usual, kind of a few back to back, but nothing, you know, crazy. I had been kind of just like the previous few days, just feeling, um, you know, not necessarily like, my body was telling me that we were getting closer to, you know, game time, but I definitely felt like I was mentally and spiritually just holding back my anxiety about, you know, getting ready for the birth, like not going into like this obsession of like asking myself every day, is today the day? Is today the day? And here, on, you know, on the podcast, we kind of shared that literally in the last episode before we actually went and yeah. had him uh, <laughs> and gave birth to him was me expressing just like how I was handling just being present and not being so caught up in just like the anxiety of it all. Because, you know, you wait your entire pregnancy for birth. So it's like the closer you get to it, and especially when you're getting towards the end of the third trimester, and it's really like the baby could come at 38 weeks, 39 weeks, 40 weeks, 41 weeks. Like, you know, Sarai came naturally at 38-ish weeks, and Micah came at 41 weeks, almost like exactly 41 weeks to the day. And so that was such a drastic difference for me, obviously giving birth to Sarai in a hospital, getting an epidural, and then giving birth to Micah in a, you know, birth center, no medication, and in water. Um, and so those experiences were so different. And so really with this third baby, not knowing what to expect and you know people say your third baby goes you know you give birth faster you know you probably are gonna go longer and all these things so i'm just like i don't know what to expect so managing my expectations there was huge but you know i barely was 38 to 39 weeks when he came so i'm thinking oh he's going to go longer like micah did because he was kind of measuring the same um, way throughout the pregnancy as far as like being, you know, 
uh, just, you know, I would just assume that he was going to come later versus earlier. But I will say now looking back at that day, I was like weepy. Like I had a moment like midday where I did get like very emotional and I didn't even really express it to Mark because I thought I was just like having a moment, a real pregnancy moment where I just was like very sick and tired of being pregnant. And that was the first and only time I truly felt like that this pregnancy and I thought it was because I had done such a great job of managing my emotions the whole time that I had really kept that feeling at bay by just like being like spiritually tapped in you know being mindful of like where I was hormonally and things like that and so like that day I just like started crying in our room and I was just like upset because I was still pregnant and just kind of like in all the unknowns of it all and like Mark came in and just like comforted me and we didn't even say anything like I didn't feel the need to say anything he didn't feel the need to like ask me anything because it was just one of those moments where you just like needed to like get it out and move well, on pause and then I'll say this because I think um, that's important and it's important for men because that's something that I wasn't I didn't always do even as far as like, even as recent as earlier this year or this summer. I mean, because a few weeks ago, like truly, that was the first time that without, without preparation, without conversation before or after, that you truly in a moment comforted me without any explanation. Like that's the first time that's actually ha happened, even though we've talked about it multiple times of like, as far as like a, if something happened and then we discussed after like this could have gone better this way or that way we had had those conversations though that was the first time it actually came to action yes i'm saying for men though because we're wired to solve the problem we're wired to find the solution and put the solution into action and oftentimes that's my first go-to so it takes work to pause and not go there to pause and think about what does my wife need in a real way and have all the options on the table and then remember, oh, I don't have to always have the answers. Sometimes I won't have a response. God will just use me to comfort her. Mm -hmm. So that was one of those moments that it was like, okay, if she didn't you know, say anything or whatever, she's pregnant. Like keeping that in mind as well. Mm -hmm. um, just go comfort and like yeah. I, I honestly didn't even think of think of about that being that day until you telling the story now. Wow. Yep. So that was that day around six or seven p.m. I was texting my midwife and we were talking about something else, and then I just added on like, hey, I've actually been. Uh, having contractions today um, and I noticed at that point that they had kind of like been going on all day maybe one or two here and there nothing steady so I didn't even notice it until I was texting I was like oh it's almost seven o'clock like I've been having low-key contractions all day usually they kind of dull out you know in the morning or in the afternoon or whatever but they had kind of come back and come back and forth at that point so she was like, okay, well, you know, at this point, she's in Oklahoma, which is about a four and a half hour drive from where we live. Again, I'm at like 38 on the brink of 39 weeks on this day. So ain't nothing um, about to happen. So, you know, we're not thinking about it as far as like we may go into labor today. Now, we did have the birth and pool already set yes, up. Yes, we did have that set and up. And really that was like... Because we had a scare like a couple weeks prior. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? Let's blow it up because in my mind, first off, I'm like, I've never used one yeah. or experienced one. Yeah. So, like, I don't even know how this is going to work because how are we going to put water in it without bringing the hose in? Like, right. So, I'm like, okay, let's we just want to make sure blow we it up. Prepared. Somewhat prepared. Yes. Even at that because yeah. we still didn't, like, actually test it fully, if yeah. that makes sense. Right. So, it was like, okay, we want to make sure that we're somewhat prepared. Yeah. So we had the birth pool really blown up in the middle of our living room for like two weeks and we just kind of got accustomed to it being in our living room at that point. And so 
I got in the bathtub because that's what Therese said to do was just to like calm my body down um, and just kind of like relax a little bit. Okay, so I am 39 weeks right now. I'm gonna try to talk really fast because I think I'm in labor. I texted my midwife. She is not even in town right now, which is like a little, a little got my anxiety up and then um, Obviously, I'm 39 weeks, so we want to stay. We want him to stay in for a little while longer. But he could come. Shh, 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 shh. So, so she said, want a bath? Take some Benadryl or um, drink some wine to just like slow things down a little bit. So I'm about to take a bath. That's the water running right now, so that we can kind of slow this down a little bit. Um, yeah. So we'll see. But I just wanted to do a little check in. Well, I'm thinking about it because if something does happen, then we ain't we ain't gonna have um, no footage, no nothing of this, and we'll be by ourselves. So, yeah, let me go take it back. So I actually, at that point, cut my camera on because I was like, I don't know if this is labor. I want to have some footage because it just I had this thing my entire pregnancy. I had multiple dreams about this about literally having a super, super fast labor, one. Having my midwife not be here, whether it be, it happened so fast that I forgot to call her, or it happened so fast that I didn't get a chance to call her. Multiple dreams, that was the scenario. She was never there for my birth. And then three, that it was always just me and Mark giving birth to this baby and me not like me being shocked about it like wait what and so those three things had popped up for me my entire pregnancy so when i cut the camera on i was like okay just in case oh is that sarai or micah got in the tub even had micah and sarai in the tub with me at that point because we were chilling i had a glass of wine uh and chilling hold on can you tell me She's telling this story very like that. chill because it was chill at that point. You yeah. called me in the room. He was like, Mark, Mark. I'm like, I was in the kitchen. I'm like, yeah, I peeked my head in the door. And you're like out the bed, bent over, breathing hard. I'm like, what happened? And you're like, run me a bath, run me a bath. I'm like, okay. Okay. And then you tell me that contractions have started and to slow them down because oh. Therese out of town and she won't be here tonight. Let's try to get the contractions under control. I don't remember it being that intense, but again, like yes. this is how warped your memory can yes. get when you're in birth because I, I, at this point, I don't remember being freaked out. And I also- I don't think it was necessarily freaked out. Maybe you were The contractions like, were, 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 I guess, like picking up. I also didn't want to believe that I was going into labor because yeah, I knew that was Tari wasn't up. gonna be here. Yeah. And I just was like fighting that truth, that potential truth that like I could be going into labor. So yeah, so I get in the tub and things honestly did like chill out for a couple yeah, like, hours. You got the tub, we yeah. sat, we I put the kids to sleep, I came out and you were like sitting down and you were just like you you looked like you were feeling better. Yeah, I felt normal, honestly. Like I felt normal. Where are you going? <laughs> what you want? You want to go play with your toys? Yeah. Go ahead. So yeah, we, we got the wine popping. She's calm now. And having a conversation about like, not even about like having a baby tonight, but just talking. Like yeah. it was a regular night. We called Tari finally. We're letting her know like how things are going. We're pretty sure that she's not going to be able to be here tonight. So yeah. we're just counting on tomorrow. Because she's also not feeling well. Yeah, she's like sick sick. Yeah, like food poisoning sick. Yeah, so she's There's in Tulsa. There's multiple factors here that were inhibiting yeah. her presence, which, you know, could have been again one of those moments where you like start freaking out, but we were so calm and part no, of that was you not- were freaking out. No, I was not freaking out. You thought, you, okay, so it, it's clear that you thought <laughs> that I was more scared or more freaking out in these moments than I really was. I genuinely did not feel that way. Was I worried about not having her here? Yes. Did I prefer the idea that like 
I didn't go into labor that night without her there, yes. But I, I was not freaking out at any point. That's genuinely not how I felt. Was I worried? Yes, but I wouldn't call it freaking out because in my mind, I was really trying not to go there, like mentally. Okay. How did the conversation go with Tariq? So we got on the phone and I had gotten on the phone with her because, you know, we were relaxed, but things kind of started picking back up again. Like I started feeling uh, the contractions uh, weren't regular, but they were just getting more intense. And I'm sitting, you know, in my bed and kind of being like, okay, like things are kind of calming me down now. Maybe this is not happening tonight, but it could still happen. Um, and, you know, she was just really, you know, mentally prepping me. And we were just kind of talking about, you know, the conversations we had our entire prenatal care. Like our prenatal visits were never like quick. <laughs> okay. Like yeah. she really became our sister. Me and her got very close and comfortable with one another. Our visits were like always a, a minimum of two hours. Like we just talked about everything and talked about you know our faith specifically and just like spiritually navigating this pregnancy and just life and things and motherhood and so much and so we really you know tapped back into those conversations of just like hey you know we've shared this and that about um what we thought was going to happen and how we would uh respond in different situations and this is one of those situations that maybe it wasn't you know something that we thought would happen for sure but we also talked about you know this could happen very well could happen and my dreams were saying that it was gonna happen and her dreams also were saying that it was gonna happen this way and so it was more of a like confirmation of like what god had already kind of been planting in both of us about this birth because we were both not shocked that like there could be a, a reality where it was just me and Mark at this birth. And so, you know, we're con we're having conversations and we're praying together and she's really speaking over me and praying over me and helping me kind of put that worry aside that I was having about her not being there. Because at that point, that was all I was really worried about. I wasn't worried about, you know, giving birth by ourselves. I wasn't worried about, you know, was the baby okay? I w that none of those fears manifested in me at all. It was more so that like this birth experience wasn't gonna go the way that I desired as far as Tariq being here. And, and that, yeah. that was incredible to me because I overheard the conversation, the prayer specifically, and it was so dope. I was just like, okay. Love Tariq, like, this is my sis. Like this is great. I can tell that like Jay don't wanna have his baby tonight. But at the same time, Tari added a comfort level that was like, if it happens, we're yeah. fine. And Even with her not physically being here. Yeah. Like, so I, yeah. I ended up coming in the room after, I, I heard them praying and I'm like, let me give them a moment. I come in the room afterwards and just like let you know like, hey, no matter what happens, we're prepared. Yeah. Um, God's got us. Yeah. Clearly God knew this before we did. So if we are in a position to where MJ is coming tonight, I'm ready. Yeah. Like, I'm not anxious, I'm not stressed. Like, and that helped me too, like you coming in and saying that because like, you know, just knowing that you were gonna be calm and supportive. I mean, obviously I know these things about you, but like I needed to hear it affirmed in that moment. And you definitely felt led to say that and because I wasn't expecting it, um, but it helped me, you know, further feel like, okay, I'm comfortable, I'm safe, we can do this. No matter what happens, God's got us. And it just, yeah, it affirmed that security in me um, that I knew I needed in that moment. God knew I needed in that moment, even though I didn't necessarily know I needed that specifically in that moment. Yep. Um, so yeah, so, you walk out, I'm chilling. Um, <laughs> Micah is behind the camera, so <laughs> y'all don't mind him and his, you know, toddler talking in the back. But uh, the contractions at that point got started getting intense. Like you had come in after putting the kids to bed and we're literally sitting in the bed chatting like any night about to go to sleep or relax after a long day. 
and <laughs> Micah. <laughs> Micah, come here. Come here, man. Come here. Come here. Things are getting. I have like, like one big. She had to, yeah, that, like, like a intense contraction, like. And it's it, wild because yeah. I had just like actually finally like sat down, so I'm like, okay, kids sleep. I'm about to finally get some rest. Like her contractions, they've subsided, so like we're good. I just cooked chicken pot pie that night, so I was like, so good. Okay. We're good, right? Regular night. And I look to my right, and I could tell that she's having like an intense contraction. And after that, I was like, babe, I'm gonna go make sure there's a good amount of air in this pool. I'm putting air in the pool. The Holy Spirit says, put water in the pool. Mind you, I haven't tried to put water in this pool yet. So I didn't realize there was like a hose to go in the faucet. I had to do that and take the faucet off, put the hose in, and then start the water. And so, I'm doing that and as it's about halfway full, you come out the room and you're like, I'm ready to get in the water. So I'm like, all righty then. Which I didn't even know he was filling the pool up. So thank God you thought to do that because it progressed. Like I had that really intense contraction when you were in the bed too. And when you left, they just kept coming. And that's when I actually realized like, oh, I really like, I'm in labor. Like this She's got happy. leveled up real quick and I couldn't have like predicted that because it went from like level maybe four or five to like seven, eight in a matter of like 10 minutes. Like, and they started getting more, you know, more intense, quicker. And I, so I texted Tari and we, or we got on the phone and she was like, do you want to wait another 30 minutes and like time these out? Or do you want me to send my backup midwife? And so I was like, you know what? I feel bad because if I don't have this baby tonight, I don't want somebody to come all the way to our house and you know, for nothing. She was like, Jay, this is what we do. So it's fine. You're such a mom. Like let, if you want, let's just have her come and you know if you don't have a baby don't have a baby but if you do it'd be a great thing that she's there so i was like okay so she says you know it'll be about 40 minutes between now and when she can get to your house and i was like all right so we get off the phone and then i was like okay this is getting intense and i so, like stripped down like so completely. 40 and 40 minutes was was 11 35. I remember this time more than I remember his birthday. <laughs> it was 11.35 when she said that the midwife would actually arrive. So I'm like, okay, bet, 11.35. So as long as this baby don't, when Jay came out the room, now I had the fireplace going, we had our worship music playing. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, she came out the room and she said she's ready to get in the pool. But she was in the water with Micah hours before she actually gave birth to him. So I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Like, yeah, I was in the water for a while. As long as she don't have this baby before 11.35, we good. Yeah. I just gotta keep her calm until then. So I'm like, sweep, she's in the water. I'm getting water for her. I'm sweeping up and just time is passing. And she's probably in the water for what? 20, I mean, I got in the, I got yeah. in the water and I immediately told you, put on my camera my yeah. phone because you were like should we call Carmen oh yeah and I yeah. was like at this point no because on top of everything Carmen our videographer photographer she already had told me that this was the one weekend that she wasn't going to be available because it was her daughter's birthday and she had a backup a backup photographer ready I would just need to like, obviously like when I reached out, blah, 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 blah. And in that moment, I just knew, I was like, there's not gonna be time. And I also like, don't even know, I never even looked at the other photographer's work. I didn't even, and I was like, you know what? I don't even care. I'm like literally contracting. I, so that's how that happened. Like, I was like, just cut, put my phone up and let's just do that. So at that point, that's the only way I even have an understanding of how quick this entire thing happened because we cut that camera on cut the and camera obviously on. it has a 15, timer. 20, yeah, 15, 20 minutes in, she goes, I think I'm ready to push. And I'm like, 
Oh, shoot. Let me wash my hands. <laughs> Where I was sitting, I could tend to her, but I could also see the clock on my oven. So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, 11.35, 11.35. Put my hands down there. She's like pushing, pushing, like pushing, well, pushing. Well, because a couple minutes before this, I legit felt my water break. And with my other two pregnancies, I didn't have like that, like, oh, my water broke, let's go to the hospital or birth center moment. For Sarai, my water broke after I had the epidural. I just felt the pop and the release, but I didn't feel anything else. And so I didn't really have that experience. And then with Micah, my water didn't break until I literally pushed him out. The, my water broke and he came out at the same time. So a lot of people actually don't have that like, you know, movie scene where like there's a gush of water on the floor and then you know to go to the hospital. That's actually not as common as we think it is. So for me, it didn't happen with either of my pregnancies before. So when I was in the 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 tub and i'm just kind of like coaching myself mentally of just like you know I, I was speaking like affirming just phrases over myself of just being like i'm strong enough for this i can do this like really submitting and re and and relinquishing my control to my body um and having that like physical and spiritual connection of like whatever my body wants to do i'm allowing it to do so when i felt my water break i was like oh my gosh okay that's a real water breaking moment and then i immediately felt like my body opening up like i could only like be in like a squatting position holding over holding like onto the edge of the pool because that was like just innately how my body wanted to position itself so i was already in this like squatting kind of like you know on my knees kind of position to where gravity was helping no, was MJ come down. And so I felt that happening. I just knew that it was time, like it was happening. And so I told, that's when I said, you know, hey, like I'm ready to push. I'm like, oh, the head, I can feel the head, like let's go. Like keep going, babe, like you got it. Pushed again, mm -hmm. heads out, and I see the cord wrapped around his neck. So I paused in that moment and like calmly and gently removed it from around his neck. I told her to keep pushing. And sure enough, I'm like, what <laughs> just happened? Him. I caught him 11.33. And so at that moment, um, I gave him to her. I, I'm in shock, okay? Because I can't believe that like, this baby is actually outside of my body and in my arms because of just how Yes, it was painful. Yes, it was like, you know, mind blowing experience as every birth is, but I just couldn't believe how my body, how efficient it all was because I don't remember being able to feel the transitions of my labor that um, intensely with even with Micah being unmedicated and having a water birth before. So like this time being my third so you helped me step out of the tub, walk well, into got the up, room. Well, I got up, ran to the room, um, put some towels on the bed, came back in. I helped you out the out the pool. Um, my holding baby boy, y'all laid down. Mm -hmm. And right at that moment, two things happened. Michael wakes up. Yeah. Which, mind you, Micah and Sarai, are, <laughs> their bedrooms are right here. Yeah. So they didn't wake up at all. And when we, when I got up and, you know, I went and laid in the, bed, in the bed and then you cut off the camera, I looked at it after and it had only been, camera had only been on for 14 minutes. Like that whole thing happened in 14 minutes of like active labor, really. And minutes. yeah, and three minutes of pushing and three minutes. I mean, it was just insane. Um, if that, I, yeah, I mean, I could probably <laughs> go back and look at it, but um, That's enough. and we'll try to put some clips of it here. But like, truly, it's super dark. <laughs> the footage is so like, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it was, was literally yeah. like that's all we had time to do. Like, literally, yeah, like yeah. it was like we were so like focused in. Obviously, giving birth is way more important than trying to worry about a camera's light and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, even we, for we us, were, <laughs> even for us, even for us, yes, because we actually care about these things. Yeah, uh, but it he wakes was, up, yeah, and there's a knock on the door, 11 35. 
midwife. Yep. So I go, I open the door for her, and I'm like, he's here. Um, yeah. They're in the room in the bed, and I walked up to the bed. Yeah. And it was just. Oh, I was so glad when she walked in because that's exactly when I felt like, okay, I knew I could push the baby out by myself. I needed help getting the placenta out. I needed help with like, just like everything after because that was the stuff that I knew, like I need a midwife here to yeah. like help make sure that like my, I'm not, you know, my, I'm not bleeding too much that he's good weighing him, making sure he's breathing right, making sure he's got all his fingers, his toes, making sure of all of those things because that's what you really do need support for when you're yeah. giving birth is like, you know, that person who has all of that knowledge and wisdom as far as like making sure mom is okay and baby is okay after you've, you know, um, given birth. So she came right on time in that aspect because I was good. I knew I could was capable of, of pushing him out. It was all the extra stuff after that I knew we would um, need help with. And so she was super sweet. Mind yeah, you, I had never was. met this woman before, but I knew, you know, if Teri, Teri, yeah, yeah was recommending Teri. and had her as her second. Um, and I want to say that either she's birthed, helped birth one of Teri's babies or They've been, I know for sure they've been on multiple births together and she, Tari has, tr would trust her with her own babies. Um, so that was also helped me just know like, okay, I trust Tari, so I trust um, this midwife as well. And she was incredible. Like she was super I, gentle, super, you know, calm um, and just like, great. I feel like at this point, right, in that process, especially, but at this point in our lives, like, God's favor is so on us from the lifestyle that we decide to live that like even something like that I'm like <laughs> even something like that I'm like if God if this is the way God wanted that to go I still don't have to worry yeah I still don't have to worry still about took care of us. like yeah still made sure whether I know that person or not God yeah. knows that person yeah so yeah like yeah. There, there there were moments throughout the night, like now that I think about it, where we, we could have questioned the situation, which would have been questioning God. Yeah. And we did it, we yeah. trusted him. Yeah. And I'm glad that we did because the experience was exactly what it was supposed to be. And overarching. And better than we could have ever planned. Like, Therese's great, yeah. she's incredible. Yeah. But even in, like, she shared afterwards that she had a dream as well. Yeah. That she wasn't going to be present. Yep. And that, like, God wanted us to have this this moment. Right. And that was great, too, because I, I know, like, sometimes, especially when this is your job, you can feel so invested that not even with bad intentions, but like, I want to be there. Right. And she, she never made it about that. All. She wanted us to yeah. have the best experience for Period. us. And knew that at, at the end of the day, God's will was going to be done. So, you know, again, like when we were talking about it on the phone um, and praying about it and stuff, you know, she just reminded me that like, no matter what God's will is being done and, you know, he kind of, in ways already prepped us for this, for this yeah. exact moment. He already put it on our hearts and in our minds that like, you know, it's a possibility that it could just be me and Mark. And also, you know, to have another like life, you know, life changing experience with just us together, babe. Like, it's just like, at this point, you know, <laughs> we've literally brought life into the world together Three just different, us three different ways three, like, different, like ways. three different ways and and all leading to just us literally just us like and, and it having zero issues even with his cord being wrapped around his neck like fear never had the opportunity to exist oh. like it literally never manifested itself because and we were so wrapped up in God's grace and his security even when we may have felt worried or or you know unsure or shocked or whatever through the entire process it was just we knew that there was a security surrounding us that like there was never a moment where we were like 
something bad could happen. Well, like that and this never is the even thing, like that core, that core thing, or tried to creep in. It was just so quick, and immediately, I just felt a calmness mm -hmm. that was like just moving. Even you know, when you said it, babe, like I wasn't worried. Like not even in that moment, and I'm pushing him out. Like I just felt like we were good and it was gonna be okay. Like I was just focused on the mission at hand, which was getting this baby out safely into the world and completing that part of the journey. And we did it. We did it. Just like this video, we did it with my cat is running around here. Yes. With both trying, running around. Yeah, they, they trying to. Uh, so. And our placenta is in our deep freezer right now. Oh gosh. Is, is in a deep <laughs> it freezer is. right now? Well, because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. With Micah, I actually encapsulated Stop, um, no. my placenta with him to actually take them uh, for postpartum recovery. I ended up not even taking them, which was on me. So this time, you know, I just wanted to stick it in the freezer and if anything, we will you know, do something with it or we'll get rid of it on its own. But And we're doing great. Um, I felt like this was my best postpartum recovery journey so far. Uh, we are almost three weeks out of him um, being born and he's doing great. Um, he had a little bit of jaundice when he fir was first born, but we didn't need to do anything other than take him outside and let him get some good vitamin D from the sun for, you know, about a little less than an hour, maybe 20, 30 minutes each day that first week and a half or so. And he, you know, got all that jaundice out. Um, so no issues there. He's been nursing. Uh, we've been exclusively breastfeeding. Um, I'm pumping also to kind of create my stash, but I've also been sharing um, online just some like postpartum care and recovery things. That's the birth story. Wake and that's up. our cue. Our cue. Okay. We love y'all. Love y'all. Thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, God is faithful, y'all. Yes. Yeah. Like, so he, faithful.